everyone, this is Vicki at Messy Table Studio. I'm here today with a project that is called Quilling. It's an ancient decorative art that was started thousands and thousands of years ago by, if I remember correctly, monks and nuns by rolling up strips of gold and specialty papers to adorn Bibles with. What they used were duck quills, geese quills, because they're round and they were easy to twirl. And then those were adhered to um, religious books, such as a Bible and everything else. And it grew and grew and went from them to regular people. And pretty soon people came up with really cool tools and all kinds of doodads and, oh my God, here I am. <laughs> so I've been quilling since I was in my 20s, 20s, 30s, somewhere in there. Um, just dabble at it. I started in the very beginning learning how to quill with a toothpick, as many people do start to learn that way. Back then, there weren't too many of these kind of tools, um, which I really love. I love these metal tools. They're so much easier than a stinking toothpick. Uh, let's see. Let me turn this over. And show you one of the very first quilling tools. I saved my first quilling tool. My very first quilling tool was this. It was wooden and it had a sharp piece. It feels like a wire. There's no slit in it to hold the paper. You would have to run the paper between your thumbnail and your finger to get it to do a little curl and then you would kind of pinch it on here, and then start to twirl. So this thing is probably 40 some odd years old, 30 or 40 years old. I've had it a very, very long time. Um, and so this was the first tool. And then I started collecting jillions of other ones. Like here's another one. Now, I don't use these to quill with anymore because I'm a lazy quiller. I like the slits in the slits in the metal pieces because it sure makes life a whole lot easier. Um, here's a metal one where I think what happened is the um, rubber grip came off and I just saved the little metal piece and it still works. It's just not as comfortable to use as the ones that have the plastic sheathing on them. It's uh, basically a tube that's uh, got glue in it and it's this metal piece is slipped down into the tube and that's what it, that's how they make the the uh, twilling, quilling tools. And yes, I have millions of them because I've been doing this a long time and I don't usually get rid of quilling tools. So here are different, look, I got two of the same one. Yeah. Like, that's a surprise. Oh, wait, make that three. <laughs> so here, uh, oh, four. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I hope there's no more of those in there. I look really terrible. All right, so here are different kinds of quilling um, implements. Oh my gosh, there's another one. Oh my God, one, 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 one. Okay, when I say I don't throw them away, I was not kidding. All right, so let me take this one out and this one out. Um, I started using, there's a company called Quilled, Re Quilled Creations, and it's upstate New York. Uh, when I started with them, they did not have their products in a retail store like Joann's and the former A.C. Moore, um, Michael's, and I think they might have them in Hobby Lobby also. What they put in there are basic beginner type stuff, and I think they may have this double-sided beginner kit where you get to buy some of the tools, some of the glues. I don't know what else comes in it anymore because I've had so many of them. Okay. Uh, anyway, so I've had a lot of these tools, and they come in varying, varying lengths. See, this one is starting to come out of the sheath. That's like that little silver one I showed you earlier where it's no stuff in it. See? It's coming apart. I don't like that, but, you know, things happen. All right, so, oh, that's not Quill's Creations. That's why. <laughs> theirs have, I think all of theirs have their names stamped on the side. Anyway, so I started buying these via the internet and I order my paper directly from them. I don't buy it out of um, retail stores because their variety is very limited. Then I discovered 
that these that have the very thin slot in them, like the, uh, were good for one piece of paper, but when you do fancy things, you need bigger slots. So these have really large slots in them where you can put, I think about maybe anywhere from five to 10 strips of paper in them, depending on the thickness of the paper that you're using. This is called a quilling coach, and I will show you how to use it. Maybe not in this video, but a future video. Well, maybe in this one, we'll see. Anyway, so what you need is a longer stem on this because it goes through the hole in here. And then you put the paper on and you twirl. Uh, do I have any paper handy? Of course not. I'll show you in a little later. Anyway, so there's the stuff. Then, <laughs> oh my gosh, how many of these do I have? One, two, three, four, five on this side. <laughs> Holy cow. All right, I need a good slot. Sometimes, I think the reason I save these is sometimes these slots close and you can't get a piece of paper through them. And I can never remember which ones are closing. Another way that people um, who just want to try quilling out to see if they like it is to take a cork and a sewing needle. And you put the sewing needle in the cork and you have the eye of the needle and you can put your paper through there as long as you crimp it and you roll it just like you would if you had one of these tools. It's just a um, less fancy way of doing it along with the basic one, the toothpick. Which, like I said, I started out using a toothpick because I didn't have money back then to buy fancy tools and there weren't a whole lot of them around anyway. You saw the little wooden one I started with. All right, so this is a two-sided carrying case. Quill Creation sells these, I think, in a lot of retail stores now. They didn't used to. You used to have to buy this online. So one side, it opens this way. And you can put all kinds of, like, if you're working on a project, you can put all your things in here that you've quilled. I leave my little Google eyes in here. If I want to put any on anything, I leave them in here because I don't want to chase them around somewhere around the room. Um, you also, I don't know if I got these from Quill Creations or not. It doesn't say, oh wait, is there writing on the side? No, just glue. <laughs> just glue. Does it say Quill Creations? No, um, I think the kit may come with a pair of tweezers because this is kind of a gluey hobby where your hands are in glue a lot and a lot of people don't want to get glue on their hands so they put things down and pick them up with tweezers. Here's one of um, Quilled Creations flat handle tweezers. There's the guard here because they're a little sharp on the ends. And there's that right there. Let's see what else. I think that's it. Okay, so I am working on a project that I really can't... I can't really say a whole lot about it yet, but I'm working on prototypes. And I decided that I wanted to do tulips in pots. And I've made one, two, three pots that have, that look like a clay pot. I think this color is called pumpkin. The larger size is one quarter inch and the smaller is one fourth, one-eighth, one-eighth of an inch. Um, quilling paper comes in usually three-eighths, half-inch, uh, eighth of an inch. You can get varied sizes, but there are just basic sizes, and the ones that I use are the... Let me pull these out and take a look. I used to get the one-eighth and the thicker one, which is one-fourth or for my friends overseas, six millimeter. And then the itty bitties are three millimeters. So there you go. These are all my purples that I put together on a ring because I have a Lexan tub full of <laughs> quilling paper. When I do a hobby, <coughs> I go all in. <laughs> all right, so what? Uh, let me show you how I make the pots because I promised I would show you how to make the quilling coach, use the quilling coach. Let me set this side of the stuff aside. All right, where's the coach? Coach is on which side? 
the other side. All right, here's the quilling coach. So I need to find a quilling tool that's tall enough to go through here that I can still do the paper. Yep, okay, this one will do it. You need some kind of a white glue. They provide you with glues in here. I've never used them, but they're there. So in order to make the pots, I need some paper. And let's see, what color was I using yesterday? None of this. Let me go find the paper. Okay, these are my brownish. They're pump they're called pumpkin rust rust golden golden and pumpkin. So these are all kind of in you know the same category of colors. Now you can tell that all of them I think all of them are thin. Well, no. I have two that are a quarter inch and the rest of them are the very itty bitties, which is fine. It doesn't really matter which ones I use. It's just that when you use the little bitty ones, it takes um, a little more paper. These are made, the top portion is made out of the quarter inch and the bottom portion for the saucer on the clay pot is the quarter inch. I don't know if I have enough of the quarter inch. Um, let me see what I have here. Quarter inch, what color is this? This is, is this golden? Yep, this is golden. All right, so let me take this off the ring. I used to have these hanging up on the wall, but I needed the wall space for books and took it down and then put it in the closet, never to look at it until, you know, now. All right, so when you get one of these packages, this is, all this stuff is from Quill Creations that I'm using. When you get the package, I saw someone do a very clever trick. You take the package on, you can do it on the front or the back, doesn't matter. And you take a um, nice sharp pair of scissors or an X-Acto knife and you cut a slit in the back of the packaging. Then you pull this out and you pull your paper from the inside of the hank here. Because what you're gonna do is just pull I said one, two, is that three, three, four. I'm going to pull four of these off. All I have to do is, if they're glued at the top, you just pull it out like this, and you don't mess up the rest of your paper. If you pull from the outside, it's um, a bit of a entangled mess. Now, there are two schools of thought to this. You can just pull these off the glued edges, or I've seen a lot of people do this. They take this and they spread it out, and they pull off a little bit of the ends, because evidently frayed paper glues much better than an edge that might have residue of the glue left over. So you just pull those off and chuck them in the trash. They're no good. I think these links are, how, how long are they? There's 50. 50 of these in each thing, and I think they're either 16 or 17 inches long. All right, so you take this, and there's a right side and a wrong side. You know when you cut paper, you can see where the paper cutter has gone down and smashed the paper, and then it leaves a ridge on the back side. So whenever you do these, you need to look really carefully at what is the front side and what is the back side. And I've moved my light where I can't see, but it's good for you. Let's see, that's the back. All right, so this is the front of the paper. Because you, you want the front of the paper to be on the outside here. So I'm going to take this, put it through the hole. Then I'm going to slide. Now you can do this right-handed or left-handed. There's really not a wrong way to do it. Uh, let's see if I can get my paper in that little slit. Now this might be one of the ones where it doesn't work. Come on. There we go. All right, so you put the paper in. Now, purists don't like the crimp in the middle of the circle. So I get it as close to a little tiny hole as possible. So you take the paper, you put it in the slot, you, you take your thumb and your finger and you start rolling it. And when you do that, you mash with your thumb and you twirl with this hand. The thumb keeps the paper flat while you roll it up and see it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. 
and there we have a nice tight peg. They call them pegs when they're like this. You can either glue another end on here or you can incorporate it into here. Let's see, inside, this is the right side. You can just slide it in there. You don't have to glue anything. And it'll flip if you don't put it in the right way. Like what I just did. <laughs> Let me put it this way. And you have to be careful because you have to hold it with your thumb. Sometimes I give it a head start with my fingers and kind of roll it around. Everybody does it different. You just want to make sure it doesn't unravel because when it springs out, that means you have to start all over like that. So I'm going to go ahead and glue it because I'm so rusty at this. I don't want to have to start over 50 times. So you just hold it over the white glue and you need to line the edges up carefully so that it's more flush. Once the glue has adhered to the paper, you want to make sure it's absolutely perfect. And then you start rolling. I have four of these. Some people put white glue on a piece of paper or a piece of plastic lid of some kind and then they just dip a toothpick in it or one of those um, straight old-fashioned quilling sticks and dab the glue on it. And there we go. We just keep rolling, rolling, rolling. The one thing about the... Um, the curling coach is that it has black rings around it where you can make your circles consistent by looking at this because there's one, two, three black lines on it. So that you can, if you're making a lot of something or you need everything to be exact size, you can use these as your guides. If you use, if you roll it by hand without using this, they include in that kit right here is a um, ruler. It's six inches and it has different sizes of holes in it. I'll show you how to use it in a few minutes. All right, so let me glue this last one on here. I might have to get some more out. I don't think this is going to be large enough for what I want. Every once in a while I have to wash my coach because glue will, for me gluing it, will stick to it. Yep, gonna need some more. All right, so I'm at the first black ring. Um, and because I want this to be consistent with the other stuff I've made, I can see that this is not large enough because this swallows it and the it needs to be the same circumference as this thing right here. So I gotta hold it and look for the paper. That I was using that I cannot find now. Did I use all of it? Well, phooey. Oh no, it's over here. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I only have a few more left of this, so that'll be the end of that one. I try to keep all my colors in the same color families together because I want all the sizes of that color to be together. So if I need an eighth of an inch and a fourth of an inch, all I have to do is look on that ring and the, all the sizes for all the colors in the same family will be there together. So I don't have to go looking around in different boxes for all the different sizes. Some people divide their stuff up to sizes. I am all about doing colors. Um, and sometimes, if you really want your paper to curl, 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 oh, I didn't tear the end, yeah, no, nope, didn't tear the ends, um, you can cause it to be more curly by using some kind of a letter opener or a metal ruler, you know, we used to make curly ribbon, we can kind of do with this to make it more amenable to twirling. All right, let's see. 
doing this one-handed spread. I don't know if I'll be able to rip this or not. Nope. Never cut your paper with scissors. I might have to be able, I might have to only do this with, there, one at a time. And I'll use the coach as a place to tear it. Now, if I was smart, I would have counted how many pieces of paper I've been using so I can make them all about the same size. Um, if you are a nut about tension, what will happen is one day you'll come, just like knitting and crocheting, tension is everything. So one day my circles will be really loose. The next day they might be very tight. This really helps to keep them consistent. Like if I had rolled this by hand, some of it might have been tighter than others. The rings, and you can see I have rings here. I'll show you how to smooth those out. That's not quite enough, so I think I need one more piece of paper. <laughs> this is like wrestling with a grease pig. So for a consistency, like if you need 10 of these strips, you should go ahead and pull them off, rip the ends, and be done with it so that you're ready. Because this goes pretty fast, especially if you don't glue and you just blend the stuff in, you merge it in, it goes very quickly. The only thing I hate about it is that when it springs out, you've got 10,000 little pieces of paper going 50 directions. All right, so this is going to be done. I'm going to leave this here. Gonna glue the end. Keeping your hands clean is extremely important in this because you will leave marks on your stuff. All right, in order to get this out, sometimes what'll happen is the piece of paper will come out that tiny hole and then you'll have this twisty thing come out the middle of your stuff. That should not happen. So you kind of wiggle it back and forth and pull it out. And then there's your lovely peg. So in order for me to make them nice and smooth, I don't know where I learned this from. I put the peg down and I roll this over it so that it's nice and smooth on the top and the bottom. And if you kind of roll it over it, it tends to smooth it out to make sure that all the paper is flat. Okay, there's one of two ways you can make this into something like this. You can go ahead and put glue all over it and be gluey fingered with it and it's a mess. I I'm not gonna lie, it's a mess. Um, I don't wanna do that. Now I do that with paper bowls because I'm using newspaper and doesn't care if it's, you know, you don't care if it smears. You care if you get black, um, nasty rubbed glue stuff on your stuff. So I start with this way. Um, I'm gonna do this with my hands and I'm show you how I you just push, I push in with my thumbs and pull forward with these fingers. Thumbs are going in, fingers are coming out. And you pull, and then you can turn it around and go this way, but don't pull too far. Otherwise, if you pull this out too much, it goes bing. I have videos in the past where I binged it. No, I, didn't, I don't like it when it springs forth. All right, so there's the little pot. I wanna make sure it's the same height that the other one. And I want to make sure it's flat on the bottom, so I take this and I just kind of give it a little twirl and tamp it down on the bottom. And then I will glue it with my finger or a paintbrush. I've been using um, the Deco Page paper medium on them because I don't like Mod Podge. I don't. Th in, I live in the South, so it's sticky. All right, so there's this. I want to show you one other way to make this, but I don't have enough of this paper. So let me go ahead and do the saucer for it. What did I use? Golden? Do I have golden in here? Golden. And it's open in the back. Let's see. And you pull from the inside of the hank. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. 
seven, eight. All right, so I have eight of these. Just pull from the middle and out they come. All right, I'm not very good at doing multiples of these with ripping them, so I kind of spread them out and tear them that way. Let me put my little trash can here. All right, so that's one end. I think the main reason people do it is that frayed paper glue is much better and nobody wants a chunk of glue on the end of their paper there to be glued into their lovely creations. Oh, that's not going to work. I hit it. Come on. There we go. All right, this is tiny. I don't want to use the curling coach because it's just so small. So I'm just going to stick this in here and I'm going to twirl it with my hand. Now you can twirl towards you or you can twirl away from you. But whatever way you go, you need to make sure that your paper is consistent like the edge from the cutting that goes down when you cut the paper is facing away from you, the nice smooth sides on the outside. You can roll it like this. You can push it to the edge and just roll it between your fingers like this. That's one. And I am going to glue because I don't want this thing to come apart. I'm not hankering to start all over again. Whoops. I've seen people rub it together and go, well, when it resists rubbing with the glue, it's done. Uh-huh. Okay. Not sure that's true. All right. So, roll. This goes very quickly. You can roll peg after peg after peg at night while watching TV. You may have to look up it every now and then to make sure you've got it right, but for the most part, it's kind of a mind-numbing task. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get out of the camera range. Whoops. Now, you don't want to get glue over everywhere, or if you get glue on these and accidentally glue a whole bunch together, then it won't pop out like this. It won't look like this. It'll just be flat. You don't want that. Okay, we are again. I need for this to be larger than the bottom of this. I don't remember when I did this, how many I used. I need to start writing this down so I don't have to count. I'll just put groups of things together and be ready to go. No. All right, let's try another one. You have to keep your hands on your stuff at all times. You cannot let go. Bad things happen when you let go. You know that saying, was it from the Bible, be go forth, be fruitful, and multiply. Well, when you let go of this, it multiplies. <laughs> it goes everywhere. And if that's not what you're looking for, it's a rather unhappy incident. All right, so I'm going to stick my finger here. I'm going to put this here and see if I can make it. Yep, I think that might be it. Maybe one more. Um, no. Okay, so I'm going to glue this end. So that means I, I picked off eight, so it means I used five. So I have three left. All right, so I'm just going to glue this on the end, and you just have to hold it for a second. It does grip rather quickly. This paper is good and absorbent, but it's not so good that it comes through to the other side unless you're really a sloppy gluer. All right, same thing applies here as in the, um, the buddy, is you just kind of wiggle it and pull out gently. I just put my fingernail down there. All right, so I'm going to roll it with this. Make sure it's nice and flat. 
Again, with the thumbs and the fingers. These two are very important. I am trying to make the saucer for this little pot. So I need the bottom to be flat and this to curl up. But we'll see how far I can go with it. All right. And there we have it. There it is right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some glue so I make sure that this is the size that I want it to be. I'm not going to go get the paintbrush and all that mess. I just take the glue and rub it on the inside and that will also hold the outside. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to take the glue and stick it on the bottom of this one. and rub it around because I don't want it to pop because this fits perfectly in there. I'm going to let those dry. While those are drying, I'm going to show you how to make the rest of it. I'll put these little guys over here on the side since I'm done with those. All right, so for what I'm making now are tulips. And they will be tulips on some kind of a, um, either a toothpick or a wire wrapped with floral green tape. Depends on what I have on hand. Not really sure. So there's that. All right, so the next thing is I need to make, um, I'm going to make leaves for my flowers. These are the leaves for the tulips. And every tulip usually has two leaves like that. I'm flip this one over. It'll look like that. Then I will have, now these are going to be stacked on each other. They'll be glued one on top of the other. So here is one of the outer parts of the tulip. Purple probably wasn't the best color to pick for today. So we'll put him here. And then this guy, oh no, it's the opposite way. So let me flip them over. No, yep, okay, flip them over. And then this one curls in a little bit. And I'll put him here. And then the teardrop will be glued on top of these to make a tulip. And then I need to find a stem to the flower. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to make all of this. I'm already at 22 minutes. How about I do a part one and a part two? So the pot, let me, sh let me finish off the pot. In part two, we'll be doing the tulip and assembly. All right, so this is already starting to do what it needs to do, which is dry. And this is the deco page. And I think this is sold at Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure, but I think that's where I got it from, like, you know, 100 years ago. I'm just going to take a paintbrush. Is this the one I used earlier? I don't want to mess up another glue brush. Oh, okay. Just a little bit. And this is where I do the inside. You have to do one, like the inside, let it dry. You don't need a lot of this stuff. You need just a, just a very light coating. I think this is a matte finish. Doesn't say paper. Glue sealer finish. Does not say if it's matte. Semi gloss, doesn't matter. I'm already using it. Okay, so there's that. And I'm just going to set it upright. And this is already good to the touch. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush this onto the bottom and the outside rim of this, the saucer. Because I don't want it to pop open. And I also don't want it to be extremely shiny. So that's why I was looking to see if this said it's matte and I don't see anything it says it is. But I don't like, um, unless I, I really need something to be shiny, like the center of a flower or something like that, then I don't want my sealant. A lot of people just use Elmer's glue or white glue. Okay, there's that. 
Now I'm going to flip this over and do the bottom part. Okay, I think that's enough sealant on it. We'll let these guys dry. And then I will leave my setup here and I will start to film part two. So watch for part two. Thanks everyone.